Interior Porsche Spider moving late afternoon. A close-up of a 1955 Porsche Spider's speedometer. The needle holds steady at 65 miles per hour, but the high-pitched scream of the sport-tuned German engine begs for more. Watch out for that car up ahead. He sees us. He's got to see us. Fade to black. Silence. Super, September 30th, 1955, 5.45 p.m. The grind of a quick downshift. The screech of brakes. The harsh scraping of crushed steel as Detroit meets Germany. The car horn blares. Its echo fades away. Fade out. Exterior highway, day. A dust bowl erupts by way of a cartwheeling sports car. The California sun shines on the desert's latest victims. A new 55 Porsche Spider and its two occupants. The spider's silver form, crumpled like an empty pack of cigarettes, ends its off-road journey near a cattle fence. German mechanic Rolf Wutherich, 28, lanky and Euro-handsome, suffers through labored breaths, lies face down close to where the driver's side door used to be. He attempts to work his fractured jaw with mixed results. His left leg also fails to cooperate. Jimmy? Jimmy? Propped by the violent relocation of the steering wheel against his chest, the lifeless remains of film actor James Dean, 24, rest against the passenger door. Head back, arms outstretched, Christ-like. Dissolve, match cut. Interior Villa Capri Restaurant, Los Angeles, night. James Dean sits in a semicircular booth with his restful head way back, his arms outstretched. Remnants of tomato sauce on a dinner plate and a tinfoil doggy bag are placed before him. Super, 22 hours earlier. Villa Capri Restaurant, Los Angeles. Friday, September 29th, 1955, 7.45 p.m. British actor Alec Guinness, 41, models an impeccable suit and tie, clears his throat, unleashes his captivating stage voice. James? Jim? Jimmy? Jimmy lifts his head, stirs from his slumber. <laughs> what? Who's there? He opens his weary eyes. It's Alec, you know, Guinness, professional British showman. This fine establishment's touch of class, or oh, at your service. Alec offers a slight bow. Jimmy moans, yawns. You wanted to show me something. You mentioned a big surprise earlier. Jimmy rises from the booth, and with a quick shake of his head, he's off. The cautious, slouched walk transports him to the front door. Alec follows. Exterior Villa Capri restaurant, night. The actors stroll to a nearby parking space, where a gleaming silver Porsche spider greets them. Jimmy rattles a cigarette from its abused pack, lights it, takes a drag, blows smoke into the crisp night air. What do you think? Picked her up eight days ago. Alec squints, offers three words filled with lead. It's rather small. Jimmy caresses the hood. And light. 1,100 pounds wrapped in aluminum. You know me, man. Always had a thing for slim, exotic women. Jimmy moseys to the rear of the car. The cigarette dangles from his lips. Alec takes a step back. She's just a baby. Check it out, man. Come here. Jimmy's proud stare and half-smile land just above the rear bumper as he waves Alec in his direction. Alec drags his feet as if condemned to the gallows, glances at the inscription, which is level with the taillights. Takes you by the throat, doesn't it? Painted in gloss black, it reads, Little Bastard. Alec's mouth drops in horror. It, it exudes quite a statement. Jimmy deals his dinner guest a mischievous grin. My work of art. My rolling masterpiece. Limited edition of one. Alec lowers his voice, leans into Jimmy. Slim, exotic women, huh? Little bitch would have been twice as daring. Jimmy laughs, moves to the passenger door, opens it. Uh, how about a quick spin? Alec's feet remain planted at the rear wheels. I don't think so. Jimmy pats the passenger seat. Come on, man. It's not every day you drop your ass into an instant classic. No thanks. Definitely not. Jimmy shrugs, closes the passenger door. What gives, Alec? Aren't you happy for me? A stone-faced Alec keeps his distance from the vehicle. My dear James, I am ecstatic for you. But I also harbor deep concern for if you continue to drive this... thing. Alec glances at his wristwatch. You'll be found dead in it by next week. Jimmy's initial head scratch morphs into fingers running through his unruly sandy blonde mane. That's a good line, Alec. What script did you lift it from? Jimmy ambles to the driver's side of the car. No script. It's called life. Making sound decisions, paying attention to the world around you. I want you to think long and hard about that. Jimmy opens the driver's door, slides behind the wheel. Alec's eyes drift from the trunk to the hood. Much longer than the length of this car. Thank you, Jim, for dinner. You were a gracious host. Alec turns to leave. You coming back for the after-hours party? 
Would love to, but my schedule dictates I rise at the crack of dawn. And that's no excuse. So does mine. Alec offers raised eyebrows. Where, my good man, do you get such energy? Jimmy examines the bags under his eyes in the rear view, makes a pointless attempt to smooth them out. A little place off the beaten path called insomnia. Alec takes inventory of the Porsche one last time. My sincerest hope is that you are wide awake when you dispose of this. Seriously, get rid of it. Jimmy watches Alec drift away in his rear view, stares at a photograph of a fairly pretty woman taped to the dashboard. Written within its white border is Mildred Dean, 1938. Get rid of it, he says. There are some things I wish I still had. Flashback. Interior middle class home. Living room. Night. Jimmy Eight stands by a roaring fireplace as he recites a poem to Mildred Dean, his unhealthy 28-year-old mother seated before him. His father, Winton Dean, 32, stodgy, reserved, sits nearby, appears long gone in his newspaper. She walks in beauty by Lord Byron. The boy removes his tweed cap, places it over his heart. Winton's quizzical eyes rise above the newspaper, offer a quick, confused glance to both mother and son. He rises, tucks the paper under his arm, heads for the door. I'm off to grab more firewood. Give me a holler if he recites college football scores. Jimmy freezes for a moment. Mildred's soothing voice pries him from his trance. Don't worry about your father, Jimmy. It's not you. He just doesn't understand art. Jimmy, still somewhat numb, turns to his mother. You always say that. I suppose he's trying to steer you in a different direction. Mom, I'm eight. I know you are, honey. Mildred catches a quick, labored breath, looks away for a moment, returns. She looks deep into her only child's eyes, lowers her voice. What do you say we walk in this beauty together? Go ahead, whenever you're ready. Jimmy clears his throat. She walks in beauty. Jimmy points to Mildred, follows with a sheepish smile. Mildred draws a hand to her chest, expresses immense pride. Like the night of cloudless climbs and and starry skies. Mildred mouths his words as he recites, her eyes water, tears flow. She wipes them away, extends her arms to him. Jimmy, come here, baby. Mother and son share a strong embrace. Don't cry, Mom. I'll get better. I promise. No, it's perfect. She withdraws from the embrace, cradles his face with her hands. You're perfect. I hope people remember my words someday. Mildred nods, provides an exhausted sigh of gratitude. They will, Jimmy, and so will I. Always. End flashback. Interior Porsche Spider. Night. Jimmy sits in the driver's seat, fires up the engine. Exterior supermarket. Parking lot. Night. The Porsche Spider pulls into a half-empty parking lot. Jimmy parks, adjusts his eyeglasses, combs his thick mound of hair forward over his brows. Super, 8.10 p.m. Interior supermarket. Night. Jimmy helms a shopping cart as he selects items from a list. Interior supermarket, checkout, register. He places caro syrup, distilled water, evaporated milk, and a carton of eggs before the young gum-chomping cashier. She eyes the small order. Find everything all right? He mumbles inaudible gibberish. The cashier shifts from the items on the counter to Jimmy's face. You look real familiar. She sizes him up from head to toe. Are you James Dean? Jimmy, the cashier's only customer, offers a nervous cough but recovers with the Texas drawl of Jet Rink, his ranch hand character from his recently completed film, Giant. No, I'm not James Dean. Ain't that the country singer? The southwestern accent disappoints the cashier. She smacks her lips, sighs, rings up the rest of the order. No, the other one, the movie actor. You know, James Dean, East of Eden? Jimmy is in his element. Jet Rink is now alive and well. He repeats her words with a head-shaking state of confusion as the cashier bags the items. James Dean, East of Eden, never heard of him. Okay then, I tried. Thought you were him. That'll be two dollars even. Jimmy hands her bills, grabs the bag. She studies his face one last time. You sure do look like him. Jimmy turns, heads for the exit. I guess I just have that face. With no customers to tend to, the cashier targets him out the door and into his expensive Porsche. She sprints to the front window as Jimmy drives away. Reality sets in, expressed by some colorful words. Son of a bitch. Interior apartment building, hallway, night. Jimmy heads down the hallway with the grocery bag in one hand and a kitten in the other. He secures both as he stops, knocks on the last door. Super, 8.35 p.m. Jimmy faces the door's peephole, waits. A lock clicks open. Aspiring actress Jeanette Miller, 22, Armed with New York attitude and a fresh shower, opens the door. She sports a bathrobe along with a towel wrapped around her head, 
takes a defensive stance with one hand on the door, the other on her hip. What? No phone call? Just show up? And what's with the cat? Jimmy leans against the door frame. The cat meows. He needs a good home this weekend. Jeanette waves a thumb to her immediate left. Fine. Dr. Bill's pet infirmary is two blocks that way. Nope. Not tonight. He needs to be with family. Family? What's with all this family business? I don't know this cat. You do now. Jimmy raises the feline to Jeanette's face. Great. Now I have two strays paying me a visit. Jimmy enters without an invite. Jeanette is not pleased. Oh, sure. Come right in, movie star. I could really use a favor. Get in line. The whole world could use a favor. Mine's called securing steady employment. Jimmy sets the grocery bag on the kitchen counter and the kitten at his feet. The curious animal starts exploring as Jeanette watches its every step. Thanks, Jimmy. Now it thinks it owns the place. Did you hear I'm racing this weekend? Can't say I have. I am, and that's where you come in. Jeanette catches the kitten pawing at the sofa. Hey! The kitten stops. Jeanette's soulless stare returns to Jimmy. Forget it. Not happening. Gene, I need a break here. I just finished three movies back to back. Jimmy scoops up the kitten, drops onto the sofa with the feline in his lap. Remember that part about me looking for work? I don't serve sympathy here. Come on, this is Marcus. He likes you. Jimmy holds up the feline, positions his mouth behind the kitten's head, works his high-pitched voice. Hey, Jeanette. I'm Marcus. I like you. We'd make a perfect team. Jimmy grips Marcus's paw, offers a furry wave. Jeanette steps forward, points to her coffee table. Perfect team, my ass. I don't like the way he's eyeing my coffee table. He'll scratch the legs off everything around here. Jimmy can't let go of the Marcus impression. I'll scratch my way right into your heart. Yeah. Jeanette takes a seat beside Jimmy. Will you stop with the stupid voice already? What is this? You don't strike me as the Siamese cat type. Jimmy pets the kitten's head. It was a gift from Liz Taylor. Jeanette gives her bathrobe's belt a good tug, removes the wrapped towel from her head, rubs her voluminous black hair. Give me a break. So Liz Taylor is doling out cats to everybody? Nah, just me. Like I said, it was a gift. Hell, gift it back. Make it her problem. I can't. She she kind of put me on the spot. Hands it to me right in front of everyone. The cast, the crew. Jimmy releases Marcus to the floor. The kitten roams. I mean, if Elizabeth Taylor gives you a cat, you take it. Jeanette stops drying her hair. Really? What else do you take from her? Loads of her bullshit? Jimmy purses his lips, considers another tactic. Just look at him, Jeanette. This little guy needs me. Did you know these cats are very neurotic? Jeanette belts out a laugh that shakes the walls. Neurotic, huh? Sounds like Miss Taylor knows you as well as I do. 